the special properties. We've mentioned the definition, but I'm just going to give it to you one more time. And forgive, I kind of got really close with this last example we were doing, so I'm going to try to squeeze this in here. What the definition of a kite is going to tell you, quadrilateral, so four sides, it has two pairs of consecutive sides. So consecutive sides would be like, I would touch them in order as they go around. So two pairs of consecutive sides that are congruent, but no opposite sides. Same thing, I'm going to put congruent in that little spot. All right, opposite means across from each other. So for example, if I look at this segment from A to D, the side across from that would be BC. So the ones right next to each other, I've got AD and then also AB. Those two segments are the same, but across from each other, across from AD would be BC. Those are not the same. And then kind of the same argument, across from AB, DC is not the same. So the ones next to each other are equal, and the ones across from each other are not. This forms a kite. Now, I have two pictures here. I'm going to draw on both of these to show these two guys. So I have the diagonal sketched in here. Diagonal just connects two non-consecutive vertices. So we have AC as a diagonal, and we also have BD as a diagonal. Okay, now, the diagonals of a kite are going to be perpendicular to each other. What does it mean if I tell you they're perpendicular? Like if those kites are, or if those diagonals are perpendicular, what does that give me? Exactly right. They intersect at a 90 degree angle. So all the, I'm just going to mark a couple of them, but all those angles where those guys intersect, those are going to be 90 degrees. Okay, while I have this drawn in here, because some of the pictures might have both of the diagonals, some of them might only have one. This has both. I just want to show this to you guys real quick. All right, so this triangle right here and this little triangle right here, there's two little bitty triangles. Those are actually going to be congruent to each other. And then this little triangle... I don't have a label where I put the intersections of those diagonals, but these two triangles are also going to be congruent to each other if you have both of the diagonals drawn in. So these are perpendicular. Okay, now, I don't know if you guys are going to remember this at all. I'm going to turn my paper just for a second. So this little triangle here, this little triangle here, these are isosceles triangles, right? If I just look here, this overall, like this is just one triangle here. That is isosceles. Those two sides are the same, right? It forces this angle and this angle to be congruent. And you, that you could easily show right there. I could do like a little reflexive property. But those two angles are congruent. And that's also going to force, I'm going to go one, two, three right here. This segment from D to where these diagonals intersect, where the diagonals intersect to B, that segment is also equal. All right, now, I could literally, I'm going to turn this around, I can make the same argument for this, because these sides are marked congruent. This guy is also an isosceles triangle. All right, let me grab my color here. So, this is isosceles, this whole thing. The two sides are the same, and that forces another set of angles to be congruent. So, I'm trying to squeeze this in. Right here, the angle C, B and then where those diagonals intersect, and then here, C, D, where those diagonals intersect, this angle here. So I'm going to turn this back around real quick. Here's my kite. The other thing that this, just one of these diagonals does this, this diagonal is going to give you two equal angles on either side. You've got to have both drawn in there to do that, but I'm going to come over to this diagram and show you what's special about that. Okay, I'm just going to draw one diagonal here, just from the top to the bottom, just from A to C. All right, and let me just, I'm going to color one side of this here real quick. Now, the longer diagonal when you draw it in of a kite, this is not true for the smaller one, 
What could you tell me about these two triangles, the one I colored and the one I left blank? They're, yeah, we could do reflexive right here. These, these two triangles, just that one diagonal, those are not isosceles, but they are congruent. You could do, do side, side, side for both of those to argue that. Now, the nice thing about this, this will give you an in piece of information we'll use on the next example. You can use that corresponding parts of congruent triangles. This angle and this angle are going to be equal to each other. Right? I could just use a reflexive side, 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 the yellow triangle, and then the one I left blank. Those are congruent to each other. Also, I could get a bunch of angles here. I get this angle and this angle would be congruent at the top, like it's going to split them in half. Same thing down here. I'm going to go one, two, three, and one, two, three. So that particular diagonal bisects the two angles it runs into, and then on opposite sides of that, because those triangles are congruent, you also have those angle D and angle B. Those are going to be congruent to each other. So just keep that in mind. If you have a kite, like down the long side, the angles across from each other have to be equal. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I don't have a diagonal drawn into either of the first two diagrams on these practice questions, but I have two angles here, and I know angle 1 and angle 2 here have to be equal to each other. If we pretend drew that diagonal down the middle, I could argue side, 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 the two triangles on either side of that diagonal would be congruent. It's going to force those two angles to be equal. Okay, now, does anybody remember what the inside angles of a quadrilateral add up to? Like a triangle is 180, what do the inside angles of a four-sided figure add up to? <laughs> So if I know the inside angles of this, this is true for any of the shapes that we've been working on in this unit, the inside angles add up to 360. How could you figure out, because I'm missing two angles there, right? But I know they have to be the same. How could I figure out the measure of those angles? What do you want to do? Um, Perfect. Okay. You got two, right? This is 90. What did you get when you get when you did that? 360 minus 90 minus 48. I got 222. And then you're just going to cut it in half because you know they have to be equal to each other. So 111 answer for this is both of them are this exact same number. Really good. Okay, now I've got three angles in this next diagram. All right, so similar argument. Here's your kite. I don't have it drawn in here, but if I put that diagonal down the middle on either side those two triangles would be congruent so you know angle one and angle two have to be equal to each other now I also have another angle we'll talk about this in a second we'll need to get angle three so there's another angle in that picture they're going to ask you for but let's do one and two first walk me through how you would find angle one or angle two if you know this is a kite what would you do Don't worry about angle three. I got a 92 degree angle here, 54 degree angle here. What would you do to find angles one and two? Everybody's typing on their calculator. Go ahead. Um, so you take the two points and you divide them by two for each side? You could do that too, yeah, for sure. Actually, that's let's do that on this. Okay. Remember, I told you the diagonal is going to create two equal triangles. So actually, this is another way you could do it. If you know those two angles, take the 92. I'm just going to cut it in half. This would be 46 and 46. Take the 54. I'm going to cut it in half. Whoops, oops, I hit the wrong button. Okay, so we'd have 27 and 27. So then how would you find angles 1 and 2? So you know that a triangle is 180. So it would be 180 minus 6. And then Yes, that's another, that's a perfect argument. If I draw that little diagonal in there, that diagonal is going to split those. You can use the inside angles of a triangle also, give you the same answer as what we did on the last question. I'm so glad you did this because this is another way you can do it. So just subtract those two guys. This is 107. Okay, now if you guys did it the way we did on the last problem, and we did like the whole quadrilateral, right? If we did 360, I'm just going to show you, you're going to get exactly the same thing. Okay, the two angles, before I split them apart, the two angles were 92 and 54, right? 
If I take 360 minus 92 minus 54, you get 214 and cut it in half and you still get the same answer as we did just by splitting it up by triangles. So there's multiple ways you could do these problems and get the same answer. Just how you want to approach it, it's up to you. Now, can anybody tell me how we'd get angle three? What'd you do? Um, Perfect, perfect. She says this is 126. You guys see, before I drew on that, that was 54. That angle plus angle, or you could do 27 and 27. Just do 180 because that extends to form a straight line. Do 180 minus 54, the leftover at 126, exactly like she said. Excellent. Does anybody have a question? <coughs> okay, now we're going to operate on a couple kites that have the diagonals drawn in. So first thing I would tell you, if you have both diagonals, the little property we talked about at the beginning, the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular to each other. So I'm just, actually I'm going to do this on both of these diagrams here. Where the diagonals intersect each other, it's going to run into each other at 90 degree angles. So I automatically know right here on this question, angle 1 is going to be 90, and on this question over here, angle 2 is going to be 90. Now, our process is going to be to find the other angles that we don't know. Let's look at this first diagram. The only other angle I know mm -hmm. for sure is this one, which is 46. Does anybody know what angle 2 would be, just looking at that diagram? So angle 2 would be like right here. It's also 46, exactly right. All right, so if you guys, I'm going to write this underneath here because I'm going to garbage up the diagram here a little bit. This diagonal is the longer diagonal. And I know we've got both diagonals drawn in here, so this can be kind of tricky, but I'm just going to shade this real quick. This entire triangle here, if I ignore where I've got those perpendicular lines, but this entire triangle is congruent. Pretend that diagonal is not there, just this, pretend the space. Those are congruent to each other. So that angle and that angle, the 46 and the angle 2, these have to be the same. Okay, any idea how we'd find angle 3? There's a bunch of different ways you could do it. Yep, you're totally right. You got the number and everything. Okay, you just got a little bit of triangle right there, right? You know that's 46. You know those diagonals are perpendicular, so just subtract 90, subtract 46. The leftover has to be angle 3, so angle 3 is going to be 44. Awesome. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, now we started this one and said angle 2 was 90. Okay, let's see what other angles we could maybe get here. Can anybody tell me, let's see, we got to get angle one and we got to get angle three. Anybody have any idea how you would get either of those angles, angle one or angle three? Either one. Yeah. When you have the 72 in the corner, mm -hmm. and you know that uh, it's like reflects. Yep. It reflects. So 72 goes to one. Exactly. So this is just 72. Perfect. You want to keep going? Sure. And then since you know that a triangle always equals 180, you can take the 72 and the 90, get three. Yes. Okay. So, like, I'm just going to color it. You could make this argument right here, or I'm just going to outline the other one. This triangle, these two would be identical to each other, the one I just kind of outlined. So where angle three is at this angle would actually measure exactly the same. Those are identical. So all i got to do, inside angles of a triangle add up to 180, subtract the 90, subtract the 72. It's really small. I think it's 18. Does that sound right? Okay. So both of these would be 18. Perfect. Is anybody having a question? If you have both of those diagonals drawn in, you can use properties that you know about triangles because it creates a bunch of different little triangles in there. Okay, now I have one more, and there definitely is a question like this on the quiz and the test, which is why I put this on there. Okay, so 
the, this is not dealing with angles at the moment. This is dealing with perimeter. So whenever you have a kite, you got two sides next to each other that are the same length, and then two other sides that have the same length. So I just kind of drew a kite in here. Now, um, the perimeter, it says, is 104. It says one side of the kite is seven more than four times the other. Find the lengths of each side. Okay, here's all I'm going to do. Let's say the two sides up here are just x, and I'm sure this is not drawn to scale. Those have to be the same, so I'm going to use the same variable. Now, it says one side is seven more than four times the other. Could anybody write me an expression that would represent seven more than four times the other? I'm basically using the other, I'm using the x for that. How could I write seven more than four times the other? Perfect, four x plus seven. Now, because this is a kite, I know I also have the other side has to be exactly the same, so I'm just gonna copy that. If you know the perimeter of this kite is 104, how could we go about figuring out the side legs? Do uh, 104, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna just add the four, or times all, times it all, times it all. Are we doing area, are we doing area or perimeter? Area. So are we gonna add or are we gonna multiply? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, how many X's do I have around here? Yeah, four, four, so eight, ten. Yeah, ten. Four here, four here, that's eight, nine, ten. So you got ten X's, just right, add it right out of the picture. Okay, if you added your plain numbers, what would they add up to around the outside of this? Seven and seven is fourteen, exactly. Okay, so all we're going to do, I'm going to subtract fourteen from both sides, right? Um, so that would give us ninety equals ten X. What would your X be? Okay, I was about to have a heart attack. Okay, so nine. Now, if they ask you for the lengths of each side, all you gotta do is plug it back in, right? So these two sides would actually just be nine. And then, uh, this is definitely not drawn to scale, so forgive. So if I did four times nine, then I'm gonna add seven to that. Four times nine is 36 plus seven. This is a terrible drawing, forgive me. These two sides would both be 43. These two sides would both be nine. Does anybody have any questions?